Hi, everybody. Hi, TikTok. Hey, Facebook. Hey, YouTube. I'm so glad y'all tuning in tonight. Listen, we are preparing for... <clears throat> We are preparing for our marriage conference 2020 at Makeover Transformation Church. So all week we're going to be talking about love, life, sex, marriage. That's what we're going to be talking about all week. Hey, Porter. Sugar Mama, I love you, but this is not for you tonight. Um, Listen, we are talking about marriage and we are talking about... um, We are talking about... um. Good evening, everybody on TikTok. Uh, how to stay in one place. How to stay in union with one another. How to stay in oneness with, with, with your partner and how to grow stronger together. And so that's what we, we got to we gotta stay together, y'all. I love God. We are talking about our marriage conference 2021 Makeover Transformation Church. It's called Naked and Unashamed. So we are going to talk about a little of this and a little of that. Um, because I believe in marriage and I believe we just don't have enough strategy to get through the things that we are trying to get through. Hey, Amanda, I did not forget you today, but I did all at the same time. But I'm going to call you when we get off of live if you're still up and moving. Um, all right, let me get situated just a little bit more. I probably should have had this done before, but you know, whew, God is good, y'all. So let's talk about sex. It is a subject that we must talk about we've been touching on it a little bit but i actually had a very good revelation um that i need to share because it's a it's an argument in a lot of homes and i used to think it was just men but i'm finding out it's not just men we got just as many women saying hey i need more um as we do men so it's it's both sides but something that i thought about sex may not be as enjoyable for you as it is for your partner it may or may not be it may or may not be. It could be medical reasons. Some people have had, some people have been introduced to sex illegally. Rape, molestation, porn. And so those images may still play in their head. They may not be delivered from those things yet. And so that can really cause a problem when it comes time to be intimate with your spouse. That could be, like I said, medical issues that are going on. And if you haven't got to that place where you feel comfortable sharing with your partner, then it just may be a problem. It may just, just be an issue that you don't want to talk about. And so it's easier just to avoid the issue. But we have to bring it together. Sex is a blessing. It is designed for marriage. We cannot have people in the world having more sex than the people of God. Now listen. The Bible says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we have to be mindful that we get to use our weapons. They're not just limited to the church. Come on, you better learn how to lay hands in the bed. And I'm not being funny. This is real. Because we have marriages that are breaking apart because of issues in the bedroom. The same way you lay hands and you tell everything else and command everything else to move, shake, break is the same way you have to do in your bedroom. You know, this is really an important subject. We have to, it's that union, love, sex is the glue that gets us through. So if we're not having that, that is that is causing a breakdown on so many levels. When a man cannot satisfy his woman, it automatically makes him insecure. It automatically. It's just off the top. Come on. And then when a woman is not being satisfied, it makes her cranky. So we got all of these things going on. So how do we get to the root of it? And if we're not talking about it and everybody's just walking around on eggshells, everybody's nerves are bad. You got to be able to talk through these things. You know, and I just really believe that a part of um, the bedroom intimacy, when you really are with your God ordained spouse, I believe that there are some certain similarities that y'all are going to like together. Just like we were talking about lingerie earlier. And I said, I love lingerie. And I, my husband loves lingerie. But I was talking to another couple. They said they do. Both of them don't like it. Because we are we are designed bone of my bone, rib of flesh of my flesh. So we're built for each other. 
The Lord builds those things into it. But if we never have those conversations, you'll have somebody just all upset about nothing. Somebody said, what about a 10-year age difference? This is what I say about age and sex. I'm going to give it to you from both angles. The reason that God does not want a man out spreading their seed every which way is because the Lord has given us enough grace for each person and part in our life. So the Lord gave you enough seed for your wife, but when the world teaches you to be out and sleep with all of these women, you wasting your seed. Now, by the time you get a wife, now you got to use Viagra because you've wasted it all. all the, uh, Proverbs 31 says you've wasted it on women, the ones who ruin kings. You've wasted your vigor on women, the ones who ruin kings. So that's the first problem, but that's all right because there's still grace for it. There's still grace. And so when I think about age, Abraham and Sarah, they was almost 100. And they had a baby. So it was still working. So in that case, you got to learn how to go to God. You have to learn how to pray about your sex life. We cannot just be casting out devils and then we're not having good sex. This is crazy. Listen, I'm, we got to get real. You got to learn how to lay hands on his drawers, honey. Listen, I'm trying to tell you what I've lived. And I'm not pretending. I'm not being silly. This is real. We have to learn how to say, you know, Lord, help me bless my marriage bed. Pray before you get in the bed. You know, this is like we have we have put sex in one box and then God in another box. No, God designed sex. He designed sex and it's worship between the two. When you're not having enough sex, it's not going to be that flow. It's that flow that happens. Listen, you can get over his craziness that's going on. You can... Ooh, honey, you can get over her specialness that's going on when, when all of those things are right. It's not the only thing in the marriage, but it is important. You know, even the leading up to, I always say, you know, foreplay does not just start in the bedroom. You have to, foreplay is all day long. It's when you call on a lunch break and call a beautiful. You make a smile. You know, it's those things. It's when you, when you pack in his lunch and you put a little note in there. Listen, all of these things. My husband went on a trip one time, y'all. We was first married. He had went to uh, Mardi Gras, which I definitely did not agree with, but he went. Baby, when I tell you I had put all kind, and I folded his clothes and put his package, his package the suitcase baby i'm trying to tell you i had a pictures every time every outfit he had i put a picture in it and a note a picture and a note a picture and a note come on i'm just trying you gotta keep you got the when i say you got to stay keep something on his mind because the world is busy the world is full of sex the world is full of craziness and it's always offering him something and baby don't get it twisted it's always offering her something we get too complacent comfortable you got to check back in baby do you still like when i do so and so do you still like when i do so and so when the last time you bought her flowers when the last time you bought her candy when the last time you say you know what baby how you want me to get my hair done all of these things are important you got to keep that tight close-knit intimacy all together yes it will be uploaded on youtube later um, you got to keep that close intimacy. You got to, you know, stay back in tune, getting, getting in tune with one another. Sex is not, you don't just want sex. The world has sex. Marriage is for making love. It's for making, making, making love. The Bible says love is patient. Love is kind. It's not rude. Keeps no record of wrongdoing. So you have to have a have even a strategy. You got to make sometime you want to so if you have a very busy life, you might have to pencil sex in on the calendar. And I'm not playing. You know, I had a couple one time or a lady came to get her hair done and she travels out of time, out of town. Um, OK, you're new here. My YouTube is the same as the TikTok makeover ministry. Um, I had a client that traveled out of town all the time and she was out of town for three months. Okay. And so she came back home and she had been in town for three days and she was getting her hair done and she ended up wanting to get a different hairstyle. So she called her husband and said, bring her some more money to get her hair done. When he walked in, he just looked like a sad puppy. And then he left out. And I said, uh, when he left out, I said, girl, I said, you know, I, you know, the beauty shop we talk. So I don't know what y'all do at y'all's beauty shop. And I don't know what y'all do at the barbershop. But we talk and we family when you come and sit in my chair. And so I said, girl, you, I don't think you done gave your husband none since you done been home. And you been gone three months. She was like, no, I just been too busy. I said, I don't know if one of y'all, both of y'all, I ain't going to say one of y'all. I don't know if both of y'all are cheating or what. But three months and y'all ain't, honey, the kids would have been got pushed out the way. <laughs> Listen. 
I said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go home. I want you to uh, take it. She's like, the kids is woke. I said, girl, you can't worry about all that, honey. Send the kids outside or either y'all go in the bathroom and, and have y'all a good time real quick. I said, and I promise if you do it right, he's going to say these words. She was like, well, I still got to do this, this, this. I can't do that because I still got to do this, this, this. I said, if you do it right, okay, if you do it right, he's going to say these words to you at the end of it. But if you need me to do something, what you need me to do? Because he's trying to get back to round two. She called me an hour and a half later hollering. She said, you are crazy. She was like, girl, why did he say that exact word, those exact words? Because it's real. You have to learn how to prioritize. Marriage comes first. It comes first before ministry. It comes first before a job. Because even if you quit the job or even if you get fired from the job, she's still going to be right there. He's still going to be right there holding it down. You better keep home tight. Okay, you better get you some good love songs and learn how to keep it tight, keep it intimate. You got to make him want to be in, 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 in your space. We, we, I hear so much arguing. I hear so much fussing about what somebody's not doing and what somebody is doing and who ain't doing it right. Are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you doing your part to make your, to make your spouse still feel loved? To make them feel wanted. To make them feel desired. This thing is real. Listen, we talked about earlier. You have to still meet your husband's needs. Let me, let me go to the word of God because I don't want y'all to think I'm just talking. I get my, people be like, oh, you so smart. Baby, it's in the Bible. All I'm, everything I'm saying, it's in the book. You know, it's called Godly Wisdom. I just read it and then he tell me the extra nooks and the crannies on it. Let me see here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Because this is Bible, y'all. It's This part right here, I said, woo! 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. All right. And we're going to go to verse 33. No, let's start at verse 20, 30, 32. I want you to be free from the concerns of this life an unmarried an unmarried man can spend his time doing the work of the lord and thinking how to please him but somebody put that on the screen but but a married man has to think about his earthly responsibilities and how to please his wife mm, is that your concern or are you just worrying about paying the bills I mean, the bills are good. The bills are good. But you got to be concerned with your earthly responsibility so that we need a roof over our head. And then how to please your wife. All right, let's go back in. His interests are divided in the same way. Come on. A woman who is no longer married or has never been married can devote to the Lord can be devoted to the Lord and holy in body and in spirit. But a married woman has to think about her earthly responsibilities and how to please. Mm, mm, mm. I love God. This is in the Bible. How to please her husband. Okay. So this night. Uh, woo, that's good. I'm not going to say that out loud. But yeah, you got to be able to do both. <laughs> TikTok is off the chain right now. Um, what if you're 50 and 60? Now, you know what? I, I'm so actually glad you said that. I want to have somebody to come on that's a little older than me because I'm 38. 30, I'll be 39 this year. And I only know my I only know what's going on in my life. I don't know what's gonna be going on when I'm 60. I want to still hoping I'm I'm having a good time swinging from chandeliers, but I don't know what's gonna be going on at 60. Um, so I would love to have somebody come on because I believe sex is different in different ages and different seasons of marriage. I'm sure it's more important when you're younger, but then again, honey, my daddy is 60. How old is daddy? 64, honey. And he didn't have, he almost had a whole baby last year. So I don't know what's going on in the world. I don't know. I'm just worried about myself, but, um, I would love to have somebody else to bring on the perspective and tell me kind of what, what kind of things are going on in those years when you kind of get past the, some people say it's the honeymoon years and all of those things. Okay. Amen. Bless God. He said he's 60 and he's still getting it in. Amen. Um, what verse am I in? First Corinthians, first Corinthians seven and I'm in, uh, 32, 32 through 34. 
Oh, my Lord. Listen, this is just too cute. Um, God is so faithful. And marriage is a beautiful gift. It's a beautiful gift. I heard a testimony the other day. And this is why I don't argue with my husband. Honey, I can't worry what he's doing. You, you want to act good, bless God. You want to act crazy, I can't worry. I'm not about to sit up and argue with you. Because life is precious. I heard a testimony today about a man. And um, he said... He married his wife and they was in love. He married her and 11 months later, she got killed. So it's like, man, that is, wow. She got killed 11, 11 months after they got married, she got killed. Then I, I know another couple, they had the same testimony. They actually had four kids. Um, they had uh, adopted some children and then he got in a car wreck and died. Like all of these things we're arguing about at the end of the day, if something were to happen to your spouse, would it be well with your soul? Stop leaving out of the house upset. Uh, I think somebody put on there, you said you're 34 and you have lost the drive. Are you married? Because if you're not married, then that's fine because it's just good. You're in a sleep season. But if you got a boo and you're trying to do all those things, um, you got to pray about that too. You have to pray about that too. Listen, there is no area that you cannot pray about sex and marriage go together. Okay. So there has to be say, you have to even say, okay, God, show me what is going on in me. Is it something in me that is causing me? Sometimes it's our diet. It, it, it seems like it's not real, but these things, it could be your diet. Um, it could be something in the past. It could be an issue that you got going on. That's in your heart that you may have thought you forgiven, but it has not truly been forgiven. There are so many different elements of why you may be sexually stimulated and why you may not, but all things we can go to God. We cannot be afraid. I've even talked to people who husbands, this is just real. This is not for children. Um, whose husbands have not, been as endowed as they would like and i said listen if the lord said we can move a mountain and i done been in churches and the last church i was at they was praying honey and legs was growing out and i'm not even pretending it's in the bible so if the lord can can take a withered hand and straighten it out baby you got to lay hands on them and say lord in the name of jesus enlarge his territory and i ain't playing y'all i mean it really worked for real it's a real thing so we have to go to god with all situations when you go to God with all situations and expect that he's going to move, expect that he is going to show up on your behalf, expect that he's going to show out on your behalf, expect that he is going to move because marriage is ordained by God. And so when you give it back to God and you say, God, I, I'm giving my marital bed back to you. This is my husband you blessed me with. This is my wife you blessed me with. And I want to please my wife. And I want to please my husband. I want to be pleased by my husband. I want to be pleased by my wife, God. Show me what it is that I need to do. When you come into yourself and say, Lord, show me what I need to do. Some of us, it's, it's just the truth. We don't like to say it, but we've gained a lot of weight. Some of us have got lazy. You don't want to do what you used to do because you just done got big and lazy. I ain't even got big, but I feel uncomfortable in my skin. So I'm like, Lord, I got to go down. Marriage is ministry, exactly. Like, we have to remember all of these components matter. I just want to see till death do us part marriage. I want to see that. And so we got to put some fresh oil. I'm excited about this conference this week, y'all. I'm excited. If you have not subscribed or you're not on our Facebook page, please get on the Facebook page. Makeover Transformation Church tomorrow night, 7 p.m., we are going to talk. We are going to teach. We are going to learn. We're going to learn how we can stay together. I want to have one of those, you know, those grandpa marriages, grandma, grandpa marriages till death do us part. I told my husband, I said, look, big daddy, when you go, I'm going to slap the casket and say, it is, it is well. It is well. Okay. It is well. We loved each other till death do us part. We really can't have that kind of love, but we have to learn to communicate. Someone else had put on the screen, don't go to bed ugly. I mean, don't, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> well, maybe that was God. <laughs> Don't go to bed mad, upset, angry. That's what I was meaning to say. Um, the Facebook is Makeover Ministry. Makeover, I'm sorry. We're on Makeover Ministry too, but Makeover uh, Transformation Church. Makeover Transformation Church. Um, all of these things, all these things matter. Love is a precious gift. Love heals. Remember love heals. Whenever you start going, your partner's going crazy. When a woman fusses, this is a tip and this will really help y'all. When a woman fusses, she's frustrated and what she's saying is I'm disappointed or I'm let down. I'm disappointed or I'm let down. Okay. When a man fusses nine times out of 10, he's saying, I'm afraid. I don't want to lose you. I'm insecure. But we have to learn how to come alongside those things. Make love. Make love. Create love. Create patience. Create kindness. You have to make a pact with your husband, okay? You have to make a pact. And you got to be like, listen, at the end of the day, we can have a disagreement. But at the end of the day, we're going to go in that bedroom. We're going to hash it out, whichever way this thing goes. And then we can take a deep breath and revisit the subject. Sex is very important in marriage. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know about when you get much older because that's I haven't haven't crossed that bridge yet. I can only give you what I've lived experience wise and what God reveals to me. But I believe it's still uh, it's just that oil that is being produced because it's not love making is not all about sex. Love making is intimacy. It's sitting close. It's listening to somebody's dreams. It's laying your head in his lap and 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 stroking her and it's rubbing toes and it's you know being able to tell each other secrets and being able to share private inside jokes. Listen, you don't want to miss this teaching this week, y'all. It is gonna be life changing. I really believe that it is. And it's so hard. Marriage is hard. It's work. It's uncomfortable sometimes, but it's worth it. Work is hard, but you keep going. Okay. My wife is hard. Is she hard? Well, keep working at her and you'll get the results. You'll get the results. The same way you get a paycheck at the end, if she's hard, you work hard at work, all right, if you keep working at her, eventually you'll get the results, you'll get the paycheck. Because we're getting into marriages with unhealed, unhealed people. You're broken, he's broken in some area of your life, or maybe you're not. Maybe you really went through your single season. And when you went through your single season and allowed the Lord to make you whole and your partner is broken, it is hard. Oh, God, that was my testimony. Oh, Jesus, God, I bless your name. But the Lord was like, well, you allowed me to bring you through. And now you got to be patient just like I was patient with you. This is why it is important to get whole in your single season. This is why it is important to get delivered. A man, let, let me let me give y'all another one. Because this is just real. A man that is still not delivered from lust. A man that is not delivered from lust loves vanity. They love it. They love it. It's just real. If they are not delivered from lust, they want you to come to bed looking like Vanna White or whoever she is. My God. You know, and that's it. It just is what it is. You pick them. So you have to work with people on the levels that they're on and then you work through it. You work through it. And now there is a certain amount of lust and, and desire that you should have for your partner. And at the end of the day, you don't want nobody coming to bed looking like Bob and their name is Susan. We got to come on together, but we got to be mindful. Uh, somebody said they have three kids. Okay, what's that mean? You got to put the kids to bed. Now, listen, y'all, I love being a, a hairdresser because I've heard some funny stories. One lady said she had five kids and uh, she said she cannot, she said her kids would not uh, sleep in their own beds. She said, honey, I couldn't help worry about it. I had to, I had my husband that I had to worry about. She said, girl, I would lock the door. She said, I wake up every morning and they would have all their pillows and blankets outside the bed. And it just had to be well with my soul because I got to tend to my husband. <laughs> You know, these are the moments and the memories that you get to make. Laughter is good for the soul. Whenever the argument gets too heated, pull back. 
You got to find what is your out. And this is a personal thing. This ain't even got to do. I would love to have a, a strategy together. How do we work together? I always ask my husband, what is our, um, what is our disagreement strategy? What is our strategy? But he said, we've been divorced for 14 years. That's our testimony. We're getting back together after 14 years. But he said, we've been divorced 14 years, honey. If we ain't had, if we, we done did all the disagreeing, we gonna do. And that's cute and that sounds good. Um, but you will have things that you have to work through. You do have to have, what's your conflict resolution strategy? What is it? For me, I can't worry about for him. For me, I learned how to worship. I'll go inside, honey. I'll go into, oh, Jesus. I can give me a good hymn in my heart and begin to sing it. And it keeps my heart pure. Worship sanitizes the atmosphere. Music is so important. It's so important. And listen, the children only smile for so y'all so long. Our kids never got out of our bed. Honey, I couldn't worry. We was going to go get on the couch. We was going to go to the day room. We was going to go somewhere. Like, just you just got to be creative. We had a king size bed when our kids was little and they stayed on in the bed. They could not worry. They didn't want to sleep. We had, they had their own rooms, had their own beds. They didn't want to sleep in them. But you got to learn how to work around. There's no excuse. People in the world are having sex good. We're not going to be married and not have good sex. It just doesn't make sense. They got medication. They got all kind of stuff. They got stuff. Okay. Now, me personally, I don't believe that you should bring porn in your bedroom, but as every to each his own, because what that does is it creates false images. Now you're putting false expectations on me. She's a trained professional. She don't have no kids. I got two kids. Come on. This is different. Um, oh, it went, it went, look, right. You got, they, they got medication for that. Um, if you really want to talk and go back and forth, cause the TikTok goes a little fast, um, feel free to inbox me. I do do life coaching. That's what I do do. So we definitely can have one-on-one -on -one and, and kind of work through some issues. And I, I see great results because sometimes it's not about leaving the person. Sometimes you just have to have somebody to talk you through, make sense of it. You can't see the forest for the trees. So that's all that, that, that really, uh, boils down to. But we got we to gotta have strategy, just like in life. We have to learn how we're going to get through problems. What's our end goal? You know, what, what's, the, what's the thing? I, I gave this tip on Sunday. Let me give y'all this. This is one of my favorite tips. Whenever you're getting ready to have a disagreement with your husband or y'all having a conversation that might go into a disagreement, sit on his lap. Straddle him. Look face to face where your legs is, can go around him. Uh, I'm from Clarksville, Indiana. Um, and y'all up close, stroke the back of his head while you're talking to him. So now what you're saying is I'm in close quarters with you. We're not in an argument because I'm up close and personal. I hope, man, tell your wife, come sit on my lap while we're having a dis, while we're having an, a discussion. Because now we're in close quarters. We don't have to yell. We don't have to raise our voice with one another. We can just look at each other. We can talk. Come on. We don't have to go wow. And if we can't figure it out, then we say, okay, all right, we're going to leave it right here. And then you just get up. And you come back to it later, but you don't have to raise your voice. We have to learn how to get a get an anointed whisper in this season. Get an anointed whisper. Even some of the music. I, I love love music. And I think it's good. You gotta have I believe love music is good. But at the end of the day, honey, I turn on a good worship song and still go in. So it just really don't matter. It depends on where you at in your walk. But I do believe some music is a little much because it does just as much as porn releases spirits and it's demonic. Some music is a little much, but it's always to each his own. If you like it, I love it. Okay. It's, it, it just works. Oh, okay. I got you. Listen, I'm with you too on it. You know this, I'm glad you said that. So one lady said she has three kids and she's naturally loud. Okay, good. This is the conversation that we're having. We have got to stop teaching our children that the sound of sex is nasty. It's not. It's not nasty. It's beautiful. If you're married, the sound of sex is beautiful. They should be like, oh, Lord. I mean, I don't know what you want to call it. But I remember I had when me and my husband were first married years ago. And my stepdaughter walked in the bedroom and we were having sex. And he was like, you go explain. What you want me to explain? And so I told her, I said, listen, this is an expression of love between a husband and a wife. This is what love sounds like. That's what love sounds like. This is not, we're, we've made it nasty. No, marriage and sex go together. That is created by God. So we have to, to be mindful.
Well, if you're single, you can be here and just listen for the future because you keep keep yourself on lock till your husband get here, till your wife get here, all the, the singles that's on here. It's okay. You got to go forth and you still got your single season, but you'll know when it's that time. But the Bible says, do not awaken lust before it's time. Don't get yourself stirred up. Don't do it. Don't get yourself stirred up before it's time. You don't want to do it because then you're struggling and then you be done pick somebody based on sex. And then you realize, oh, that's what a lot of people do. We base it on sex and then we realize this person's crazy. He got good sex, but he crazy. But we want the Lord to, to pick our spouse because when he joins it together, it's ordained. It's ordained. So we have to learn the same way you worship in church. You got to learn how to worship in the bedroom. That is so important. You gotta learn how to sing a good song, how to get you a good love song. Sing to her. You sang, sang to her. Come on, you write poetry, you write letters, write love letters, all of these things. Um, uh, well, I seen somebody say, Am I wrong? But I don't know what your question was. Mm, how do I move on after a spouse has passed away? That's a good question. <sighs> the way I look at death. The way I look at death is to remember that life is a precious, beautiful gift. But the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. The things that God has prepared for those that love him. And so when our loved ones pass on or pass away, even our spouse, you know, if their soul is saved, that is like, you know, even though you miss them, you hang on to those memories. You thank God for their memories and for, um, you know, all the things that you shared together. You hold on to those things, but you also thank God that they're not going through the suffering that of life that we're going through. They're not going through the hard parts of life that we're going through. Listen, if something happened to my baby, I'm going to miss him. I love me some Antonio Smith. That's my boo. But to know that he's not going through the, the struggles of life, I have to find a way to make peace with that. And some people are very well at, um, very well with saying, you know, that was the love of my life and I don't want anyone else. But then the Lord will bless you if you if your heart's desire is to have another spouse, then the Lord will bless you after you allow him to heal you. If that's your desire, the Lord always honors our desires of our hearts. I have an auntie that is 64 and she's never been married and she's still a virgin. And she said that's probably how she's going up out of this world because she's just too set in her ways. And she loves to worship God and do what she wants to do and serve God and travel all over the country and bless God any time of the day, night, evening as she wants to. And that's her testimony. And that's what we just got, got finished reading about. When you're single, you can devote all your time to God. But when you're married, you cannot. People of God, quit putting ministry over marriage. Marriage is your first ministry. If, if your wife ain't happy and your husband ain't happy, baby, you better get up out that pulpit. Because cause now you causing an issue. The Bible says, many will come to me on the day of judgment. They will say, I prophesied, I preached, I cast out devils, all of those things. He said, get away from me. I never knew you. So, okay, that's fine. The, the, so what that relates to in marriage is, okay, you preaching, you prophesying, they think you great all over the world, but baby, you ain't great up in here. I never knew you. I don't know you. The people, the person that they know and the person that I know, two different people. This ain't good because now we're living a double life. Come on, don't be out making women in the street smile and calling them honey sugar sweet sweet thing, all these things, and then you at home calling her, mm -mm, don't you do it. And women of God, don't be out complimenting nobody else, taking care of your pastor, bringing him his water, doing all these things, and then you at home treating your husband all dry and crusty, don't you do it. That ain't God. Kingdom blessings, Candy, don't you do it. We have to give an account to our own husbands. We have to give an account to our own wives. You got to come on now. This thing is, is important. But at the end of the day, the thing that I've learned is worry about myself. Make sure I do my part because I just believe God. And, and, and I told my husband, I love you times 10. Listen, we've been divorced 14 years. The Lord told me two years ago that he was going to restore our marriage. And it's been a long testimony that I'm not good to go into right now. But we're at that, we're at the door. 
you know, we're right here and, and it's so beautiful. And I told him, I said, you know, when we first started talking, he was like, you know, I just don't know. And I said, this is the thing. I'm going to do what it is that God has called me to do. And I believe in marriage and I just believe, listen, I know I'm a good wife to any husband. So I can't worry. If you want to, if you, you, he was like, I don't know, you know, it's been so long. What we going to do? How you know it's going to work? If you have the courage to let God make a miracle out of our mess, out of our mess, make a message and a testimony out of our trials, then I'm here for it. But if you're not and you don't have the courage, I know God's going to bless me with a good husband. So either way, when you keep your heart fixed on God and the purpose on God, you ain't got to worry about if he do right or wrong. My last husband did not do right. And the Lord said, okay, I've given you a good wife. She preaches, prays, and prophesies with you at home in the bed. She lays hands, takes care of you, does the best of her ability to do what she can do at home. And he didn't do what he needed to do. He kept getting warnings. He done had dreams. The Lord was speaking to him. Prophets was coming up to him. This is a warning for someone. Because see, a lot of people at the church felt bad. Oh, she loves her. He done lost his wife. Baby, you're going to lose yours if you don't do right. So let's just get that part straight. Now, if you do your part and they don't do their part, the Lord will, will handle them. You don't got to worry about handling them. I do right by people and let God handle his own children. I don't get in God's business. I, I promise I don't. Because we can take, let's, get, let's go to the Bible. What's the Bible? Okay, the Bible says about it, Tamar. I don't know if you know her story. Tamar. She got married and the Bible says her husband was evil and he did not do right for her by her. So the Lord took his life. All right. And then she got another husband and the Bible says he did not do right by her. So the Lord took his life. The Bible says when a man is not honoring his wife properly, your prayers are hindered. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, my God, man of God, it, it pays to do right by your wife. And see, this is the thing. Let's think of let's think of the word wife, W I F E, life, L I F E. If you don't do right, the Lord will take your wife. I'm just trying to tell you. The Lord will take your wife. It's Bible. Oh, that's not Bible. The Bible says he hates divorce. He didn't say he forbids divorce. Because the Bible says to to over he hates divorce because it overwhelms her with cruelty. We think divorce is a piece of paper. When you overwhelm her with cruelty, you're already divorcing her. The Lord told me that your husband divorced you long before now. Don't worry about no piece of paper. That ain't even, don't worry about that part. He divorced you in his actions. The Bible says, husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church. Whenever you stop doing that, you've already divorced her. You worried about a piece of paper? People are married on paper, and the Lord said it's called spiritual divorce. Don't worry, the book is coming out. It's called spiritual divorce. We have so many people trapped. And it's not just one-sided women. That goes for you, too. But we have so many people trapped in, in dry marriages because the church, how do I tune in for the conference? It is on, uh, it'll be on Facebook at... Um, Makeover Transformation Church, tomorrow night at 7 p.m., Thursday, 7 p.m., Friday at 8 p.m., um, Saturday, we're going to have worship at 7 a.m., and Sunday at 10 a.m., we'll have service. Now, listen, we have so many people trapped in dry marriages, and the church is holding you in bondage because the church is saying, oh, you can't do till death do us part. Baby, I, I promise, when the Lord told me to divorce that my last husband, I was like, Lord, you don't know that ain't you. The Lord said, uh-uh, uh-uh. Don't doubt my words. But Lord, you said till death do us part. The Lord said you are dying spiritually. Come on, emotionally, mentally. Oh, Jesus. That ain't Bible. Let's go to Eve and Adam in the garden. Mm, mm, mm. Eat the fruit. You won't surely die. They ate the fruit, didn't they? Did they surely die? They spiritually died. The Bible says, didn't the Lord make you one with your wife? Don't fool around and mess, miss your blessing. Miss your good thing. Mess up your good thing. Because God said, no good thing will he withhold from those that diligently seek him. You ain't treating her right. She will, the Lord will definitely move you right on out the way. Because she's somebody's good thing. She can be your good thing. But she's somebody's good thing. And you can be confident in that. I'm so confident in that, baby. I don't even worry about none of that no more. My 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 husband, we were younger. Lord have mercy. He was cheating out of both draws legs. But I wish I knew now what I knew then. Because I sure wouldn't have worried about it. I promise you, I wouldn't have. I promise you. 
Go to God about that. When you get to that, because that's what I did. Because I stayed, my last marriage, I stayed as long as I could. And I was like, Lord, and I had to go to God one day. And I said, God, listen, I can't keep getting up, preaching, praying, and prophesying, and, and being behind closed doors, feeling like somebody's killing me. And he wasn't bad to me. He took care of his part of the bills, all of those things. But spirit, I'm a woman of God. I need a spiritual connection. There was something that was lacking that he just was not not bringing to the table and it's okay because it was ordained for me to get to where i am now so there's no hard feelings i bless god for it don't stay past your season people of god because the fruit is now rotted some people's marriage are going to are going to be restored through this conference but some people are going to realize that their season is up i want everybody i'm like paul i wish y'all could be come on but but there's an exception what do you do if he isn't saved? Well, the Bible does say that an un that a believing wife can save an unbelieving husband by her behavior. By your by her behavior, by the way you treat him and handle him, you show him Christ through your behavior. But you have to be full. You have to be spiritually equipped to do that. You got to use your spiritual weapons. Listen. I always say back in the day when my husband was cheating when I was younger, I wish I would have knew, honey, because I would have been laying hands on his drawers while I was folding them. Lord, don't let him take them off nowhere besides here, Lord. Thank you, God. Don't let him, if he want to take them off anywhere besides here, Lord, let a fire just roll up in his growing, God. Lord, let's let your spirit just be with him everywhere he go. Run an interference on the play, God. Whoo, Jesus, we got to learn how to put prayer on everything. But the thing that I love about God is it's been 14 years. Okay. It's been 14 years for me and my husband. And I still love that black man. So I just said, Lord, it's got to be God. Because we have, whew, listen, I was gay for 11 years. He got four babies. We done had EPOs against each other, court cases. We done had all kind of crazy stuff. So listen, we're going to have a, we need a lifetime, Christian lifetime movie on the back of this thing. But... It's the hand of God. It's the hand of God. And the Lord gives you grace. When Because that last marriage, I didn't have grace for his flaws. But my husband, I have grace for his flaws. That's how you know. How do I know if I'm supposed to leave? I say, you have, there's a certain grace. He gets on my nerves. But when I wake up in the morning, I still love him. I roll up and be like, Shh, I still love him. Come on. Love is patient. We have to make, go back. We, we still got to go back here. Make love. Make, create. Create love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It's not rude. It's not easily angered. When it's real love, you're not easily angered. Listen, I told the Lord when I was dealing, I was like, Lord, I said, Lord, if you, if you, if something don't shake, I'm going to be done miss heaven because I'm starting to complain and I don't want to complain and miss heaven because now I got to complain and mumble and grumble in spirit and I'm not pleased with what you've given me. And I, and I went to God with it and the Lord gave me a dream that I was getting a divorce. I said, my God, whoo, Jesus. See, God is always speaking. We must know his language. There's a video that I have on my uh, makeover ministry on YouTube. It's called The Language of the King. Please tune into it if you if you haven't learned because God is really speaking. He speaks through dreams. He speaks through visions. He speaks through people. Come on. My kids is in there fussing. They can't worry. Honey. They, they just said they just going to bless God in a whole nother way. But, you know, marriage is so important. It's so beautiful because it mimics our relationship. How Christ loved the church. He died for his bride. He secured his bride. He sacrificed unto death. Husbands, love your wife. Life, like Christ loved the church. So in order to really love your wife, you actually have to study how did Christ love the church. One thing that the Lord pointed out to me that blessed me so good is when Jesus went into the, to the tabernacle and turned over the tables because they was disrespecting his bride. You, oh no, you're not, not my wife. You got me messed up. You got me messed up. See, he protected his bride. He never needed protection his bride never needed protection from him. Come on. There's a difference. He protected her. She didn't need protection from him. 
Husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church. Not only did he die for her, he rose from the dead. My God, with keys and authority, death, hell, and the grave had to obey when he rose for his bride. When our husbands go through those hard things and they go through those rough seasons and they, you know, they go with it. I, I, I love my spiritual father. Apostle, uh, and who bless God, Prophet George Jones. Uh, I love him. He just blesses my soul because he just loves his wife. Okay. He ain't playing about his good thing. And if he said, if he got to go without, she's not going to go without. Come on. And, and she might or might not even know about it. That's, that's a real man. It's just like a woman. Listen, if we, if we're, if we're a single mother and we don't have enough for our kids, we're not going to say, well, y'all just eat it because I don't have enough for me. No, y'all eat. Marriage, and, and it's not all bad, but marriage is sacrifice. There will be seasons. You might not feel like having sex, but she might want some or he might want some. Marriage is sacrifice. We definitely going to pray tonight. We are definitely going to do that. I love God, y'all. I love God. I love God's people. If you are looking for a church home, we would love to have you. If you don't have a church home, I'm too far away. Listen, don't let don't let time, don't let space, don't let it separate you from the love of God. We love God's people. You, we, we would love to have you as a virtual member. We would love to bring you in and use your gifts. Come on, let you get active and busy. We got a children's ministry that's awesome. We have a youth ministry that's awesome. Our women's ministry is coming up and our men's ministry. I don't know why the men of God just take so long getting in line. That's sad. Then y'all mad. Why is it women preachers? I don't want to have to be a woman preacher. It's just not enough men. Jesus. So I just do what God calls me to do. And then you have the very men that ain't doing their assignment getting mad because it's a woman preacher. We're located in Clarksville, Indiana. We also are getting ready to have a second location in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um... But also, like I said, I do do life coaching, spiritual counsel, whichever one you call it. And so we would definitely, uh, I can definitely help you if you would love that. Um, we are on Makeover Transformation Church on Facebook. That is where you can find us and tune in our service. Our regular service times are Friday night at 8 p.m., Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And then our youth services are every other Saturday and our leadership meetings are every other Saturday. If you would love to be a member, just come on, date us for a little bit. Come on, just tune in for a couple of sessions and services and see. And then if you would like to uh, come after that and join us, inbox us and let us know you want to be a member so we can get your information, check in on you, see how we can plug you in and get you active and moving. Because the, 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 uh, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. And so you got to get busy in this season. There's too many people sitting too still in this sitting still season anyway. So um, definitely we would love to have you. We really would. I'm excited about what God is doing in the ministry in my life. Yes, I'm a preacher. I'm actually the pastor of the church. Um, I'm excited about what he's doing in your life and what he's going to do in your family and what he's going to do in your marriage. And if it's hard, it's because God has called you to go before. He's called you to break. You can't break generational curses comfortable. Woo. I'm talking to myself, y'all. Oh, Jesus. I said, God, I got to see love. I got to see marriage. I got to see happiness. Baby, you got to get new wine. It hurts. It's uncomfortable to be crushed. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord have mercy. I'm not going on that subject today. I talk about it every time, but I will give you. I, I'm trying to think, do I actually have a whole video on it? Um, I don't have a whole video on it right now, but I always talk about that because a lot of people, they base, uh, base that about women preachers, but it, it is biblical and it's really about having a personal relationship with God. And when he speaks to you clearly, the first woman, the first person to share the gospel was a woman, the first person, uh, Mary and the Lord, the angel of the Lord told her, go tell Peter and the disciples that Christ has risen. So, um, Yes, come on, I do marriage counseling, I do pre-marriage counseling, I do stor stormy marriage counseling, all of it. So I would definitely love to help you. Feel free to inbox me. You can you can inbox me on whatever media platform you're watching me on now, um, or you also can inbox me or email me at AJ, AJ, standing for Apostle Julia, AJ at, um, at makeovertc.org. 
aj at makeovertc.org. So um, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm elated for everyone that has tuned in tonight on this broadcast. And I, I believe the Lord brought you here too. Listen, the Bible says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Come on. Thank you. I love God's people. At the end, come on here, pour out his spirit on all flesh. A-L-L. -L, they better get it. My sons and daughters shall prophesy. Old men shall dream dreams and young men shall see visions. So that is so true. And he really is pouring out his spirit. And we have to be able to understand what he is saying. Um, not only am I a pastor, the Lord has called me to the office of an apostle. So I, the Lord has called me to build people, build churches, build ministries. I don't, I don't intend for you to come here and stay for your whole lifetime. A lot of people, they want you to come to their church and stay till they die. No, the, the Lord does not. That's not the mandate on my life. God has called me to build people, to build ministries. There may be some that stay for us for a nice amount of time, but I'm, I'm, I'm called to grow and groom people. My email address again is aj at makeover m a k e o v a t c dot org makeover who i love god um i seen something about smoking blunts and i don't know what they were what else was saying um, listen, let me tell y'all this too, honey. I'm, I'm a dyslexic, so I don't, can't read all that because the words be double dutching on the page. That's how I know I didn't call myself to be no preacher. I don't even like to read. I'm trying to tell you. But when the Lord signs you up, you go forth and you don't worry about yourself. That's the thing. If you're good and you can do every area what God has called you to do, I don't actually know if it's the thing that God has called you to do. Okay. Um, when, when you're doing the thing that God has called you to do, it's uncomfortable. It's stretching. It's hard. You're going to cry sometimes. You're going to be humble sometimes. And the word humble is a part of humiliation. So sometimes it might feel humiliating because sometimes I'm up here and these words start doing a lot. And I'm like, Ooh, Jesus, come on. But I say it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And his spirit enables me to do what it is that he's called me to do. All I have to do is be a willing vessel. All you have to do is be a willing vessel. That's all you have to do. Don't worry about the rest. Don't worry about the people. I can't worry about the people. The Lord done called me to get married and get divorced within six months last year and be reunited with my husband. I can't worry about y'all folks that don't feel good about that. I was like, Lord. And God said, yep, because I want to show you that people pleasing spirit is still in you. Mm. Whew. My God, I got free. I got delivered because you can't be a miracle trying to please the Pharisees because they don't have a real relationship with God. They're too busy worrying about pointing out this, that, and the third. What did God tell you to do? If you doing your God assignment, you ain't got time to worry about mine. The Bible says make your own salvation sure. Mm. Oh, Lord. Well, you know, let me tell you something I had to make peace with. One of the first lessons in ministry I had to make peace with is everybody's not going to heaven. Everybody's not going to heaven. I would love it, but the Bible says they're not. Broad is the way to destruction. Narrow. Oh, Jesus. That's how I be knowing if it's God or not, because I be like, you know, is everybody doing it or is some people doing it? Narrow is the way to heaven. And the Bible says many never find it. Many never find it. Mm, mm, mm. So that's just the word of the Lord, y'all. I'm excited. I'm glad that you're tuned in tonight. I pray you got a word. I pray you even shared the broadcast tonight. Um, that's it. A prophet is well honoring his own land. It's just true. Listen, that's how I learned how to live, re be, let, let people talk about you. You got to be able to be rejected and keep on moving. They rejected Jesus. So they talked about him. They didn't like him. They persecuted him. So. They didn't agree with his things either. This is the one, I will say this. This is what the Lord blessed me with. Because uh, I was like, Lord, what well, they saying women can't preach. And the Lord said, yeah, well, they also told Jesus not to heal on the Sabbath day. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, Jesus. And you know, you have that. And the thing about people telling the wrong gospel or preaching wrong doctrine, don't worry about that. Because the Bible says study to show yourself approved. Some people just want you to keep breastfeeding them and keep... Uh, biting the food up and giving them a microwave word of God. No, get in the Bible and cook you a whole meal of, of word for yourself. You can't just dine on the microwave. That means what the Lord gave me. I'm chopping it up, spitting it out, giving it to you. You got to learn how to get in that book for yourself. So people, you can't, you have no reason to say something. If people are led wrong, it's because they want it to be. The Bible says we're led away by our own lust 
and desires. Yes, itch and ears. Come on. People don't want to be saved. They want to be soothed. They want to be comforted. Don't tell me a word that's changing because change and transformation, it's uncomfortable. He who is in Christ is a new creation and old things are passed away. If you ain't lost nothing, you ain't left nothing behind, you ain't left no people behind, you ain't left no lifestyles behind, baby, you ain't even no new creation. You ain't in Christ. You're going to have to leave some mindsets. A lot of us have a religious spirit. We have grown up in church. We know how to go to church. Come on. Come on. Don't come for me to hell. Exactly. We know how to go to church. The Bible says they, they, they deny the power that could make them godly. We're denying the power. They have a form of godliness. They have an appearance of godliness. They know the scriptures, but they have no power. Whoo, Jesus. Now y'all getting me stirred up. They have no power. God, I bless your name. Whoo, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. I've heard people say it like this. The we all are called, but the chosen are those that choose to answer the call. That's what I've heard. Uh, drink some water. Let me get some. Bless God. Y'all not going to let me get off TikTok. Y'all want me to be on here for I was preaching tonight. Bless God. We're going to pass the collection plate the way y'all got me on here tonight. I was just sharing a little short word. <laughs> but, you know, you have to be, be willing to leave those old things behind. You got to be willing to, to go forth and do what it is that God has called you to do. You got to be willing to push past those things. You got to be willing to leave. It was not comfortable. When I got out of homosexuality, I was with the last woman that I was with for about three years or so. I went through illness. I went through, I was paralyzed on my whole left side and waist down off and on. For three years, she was with me. She was, she, she took care of my kids. She paid the bills. She was faithful and Lord. I mean, it was some hard times. She had to carry me a lot of times. It got to the point where my medication, um, my, where my medication wasn't, <clears throat> wasn't working and we wasn't really in God. So I didn't know that you just can lay hands on yourself and make a mountain move. So she was going out on the street trying to find me medication because I was in so much pain. Listen, I know about, but when God said, come away. Whoo, Jesus. God, I bless your name. I've learned how to break my own heart. I've learned how to break my own heart to obey God. Oh, Jesus, I've learned how to break my own heart to obey God. See, a lot of people come out of sin because it was bad. It wasn't bad to me. My The women that I dated were good to me. They took good care of me, blah, blah, blah. I'm not boasting. I'm just telling you how it is. But when God said, come away, and he started making that thing plain, I had to write a sticky note on my mirror because we still live together. I didn't have nowhere at the time I was homeless. I didn't have nowhere else to live. And so I had to write a, a sticky note on my mirror and it said, get out of your feelings and get back to your faith. I miss her. Get out of your feelings and get back to, but she been good to me. Get out of your feelings and get back to your faith. I like weed. Get out of your feelings, God, I bless your name, and get back to your faith. This walk is not all comfortable sunshine and rainbows. There will be moments that you're going to have to cry for a season. There will be moments that you're going to have to, to, to endure. The Bible says endure hardness like a good soldier. Come on. This is real, y'all. I wasn't taught this week. I don't, I'm going to just speak for myself. I was raised on a sugar-coated gospel, on a slap your neighbor, and God's going to bless you, and turn around three times. No, there will be seasons of marriage that you got to cry through. If God has not released you, don't go. I didn't release myself. I'm afraid to disobey God. Everything is not sunshine and rainbows, y'all. But that is why we have God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can endure all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let me go to one of my favorite scriptures that blesses my soul whenever life gets hard. You got to have you some Bible. I'm a Bible girl. 
If I can find it in the Bible, I'm like, okay, God, I can stand against this storm. Jesus. Who Jesus. First Peter 5 and 10. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory. See, we like, oh, I get to share in the glory of God. I get to share. I want to be, I want to be used. Huh? Oh, I want to be used. I want to, who I want to preach, God. I want to be used. He called us. This is what you, those that are called, we're called to share in his glory. Okay. Woo, Jesus. I get to be used by God. All right. Well, let's go to the word. In his kindness. The Bible says this is his kindness. We, we just, mm, we, we are, our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Listen, I got a book coming out in April. It's going to bless you. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you a little more about it. It's going to bless you. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ. So after you have suffered, in his kindness, you must suffer. After you have suffered a little while. who Jesus. God, I bless your name. After you have suffered a little while, mm, 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 he will. It's his, whenever you see he will, that means that's the will of God. I don't know the will of God concerning my life. It's in the Bible. God, I bless your name. He will restore. Because in the suffering, you've lost some things. Oh, Jesus, in the suffering that you had to endure because it was his kindness, you have lost some things and he has to restore. Baby, this is my testimony. Uh, I was homeless for three years also. I was homeless and I lost everything. But the Lord started with restoration. He gave me a home back. Uh, my car was repo. He gave me a beautiful. No, first my car was not that fancy. Then he gave me a beautiful Chrysler 300. I love my car, baby. Listen, the inside is white. I said, God, why are you going to bless me with white interior? You know I don't do good with keeping a car clean. But he's a good guy. Come on. He will restore. Then he will support. Because you have to be able to maintain the things. My God. He's not just going to give it to you. After he restores you, he's got to give you the support. That's why I don't worry. I can't worry because God is going to support everything that he's given me. He know that this is the house he gave me. This is the car he gave me. He know I need to be able to provide it and pay the bills. He's going to support those things. He will restore. He will support. Then he will strengthen you. My God. Because in that suffering, you got weak. My God. You got weak. The Bible says, don't get weary in well-doing. God, I bless your name. Why is that in the Bible? Because there will be seasons that you almost gave up. There will be seasons that you almost gave in. But God, who Jesus. Somebody tuned into this broadcast tonight and you almost was ready to give up. You almost was ready to give in. God, I bless your name. Who Jesus. Oh God, after you have suffered a little while. Who Jesus. Oh God, I feel God. Oh God, I bless your name. Somebody saying, God, how much more though? Hey, shit, I'm out of this city. They said I'm out of this city. Who Jesus. God, I bless your name. After you have suffered a little while, God will restore, support, strengthen. Oh, God, I bless your name. And he will place you on a firm foundation. He will place you on a firm foundation. My God, because after that suffering, you've lost so much. You went through so much. You were bruised, battered, scorned. Come on. You went through so much. He's got to be a man of his word. And he's going to he's gonna restore you. He's going to support you. He's going to establish you. And he's going to place you on a firm foundation in every door that God opens. Who Jesus, no man can close. And every door that he shuts, God, I bless your name. No man can open it. Listen, he will make your enemies your footstool. Who? Don't worry. Don't worry. I love to teach faith. This ain't no... This ain't no sugar-coated fluff. I'm, I know I'm funny and I know all those things. I just say what's on my mind. But at the end of the day, I'm trying to teach you faith. How to get through those hard seasons. Nobody taught me. I wouldn't have been divorced from that man that I loved no 14 years if somebody would have taught me how to get through. 
how to lay hands on him while he's sick, how to lay hands on him when he sleeps, how to lay hands on him when he's making love, how to go into worship when he begins to fuss, how to hear that, yes, he's fussing, but really he's fussing, he's hollering, but it's fear talking because he does not feel that he deserves me. Because he's wrestling with demons in his mind. He wanted to be faithful, but that demon was passed down on his bloodline. Lust. So many men are, oh, he can't be, oh no. So many people are struggling, not just men, women too, are struggling with lust. And not only because, because they, they, some got it because they were touched at a young age. But the Bible says we were born in sin and shaping and in iniquity. My God. Born in sin, shaped by the world and the circumstances and the situations that we have encountered. People don't want to cheat on their wives. They don't want to cheat. They don't want to be a heartbreaker. Nobody wants to be on drugs. Nobody wants to be addicted. We have to learn how to listen between the lines. That's why I don't, I don't play those church games. You can't come if you this and you can't come if you that. That's crazy. Come as you are. I believe the word of God that comes out of my mouth. I believe the oil that's on my life because I've been pressed out. Listen, I done been through a little bit of everything and I bless God for it. I've seen the sick heal. I've seen eyes open. Come on. This thing is real. I've seen cancer heal with no medication. I've seen legs and body parts heal. I pray for people and they done been healed online. So I know that the blood still works. I know that it still works. And the Bible says, after you've suffered a little while, God is faithful to restore, support, establish, place you on a firm foundation. It's the will of God. Be not weary and well-doing child of God. He's just pressing you out. See, some of us, are in that season where we're just still in the suffering. We haven't hit the restoration, but some of us are in the restoration. And then some of us are in the support season. And then some of us are in the, the, the strengthening season. And then some of us have been placed on a firm foundation. So I like to teach from all angles. That's why I come from all angles. Everybody's not all up here spiritually high and everybody's not down here. So I try to hit it all up and down. So sometimes it's a little funny. I might be like, she's a honey, she just go. No, but I got to reach everybody. I always, I try to teach and preach the way that I would have received it if when I was going through those struggles. When I was a single mother, my God. Self-control. It's a real thing. Fasting is so important. It helps you. Fasting and prayer, it helps you. Self-discipline, it will help you. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Amen. We're going we gonna to meet all levels. No condemnation. Quit condemning people. People only. People don't sin because they want to be sinners. They sin because it's the cover-up. It's the band-aid for their brokenness. People are drinking and smoking and cussing and naked and sexing and doing all these things because there's a broken area. And sometimes we don't even know. We think that's just how I am, honey. That's how I like it. When I used to dress inappropriate and naked dress back in the day, I used to say, that's just how I like it. And if you like it, cool. If you like it, good. But if you don't like it, don't look at it. I didn't know that I was still dealing with the, the issues of being molested as a child and still dealing with the issues of being cheated on by my husband that I loved. I didn't know that that was what I was doing. That was my band-aid. I was exposed. My heart was exposed. So my body, I said, I got control over this. I can expose it if I want to. I didn't have control with being exposed as a child to sex prematurely and in a perverted manner. I didn't have control for my heart to be exposed and to be broken at a young age. But this body, I can expose it if I want to. That's what we're saying. We have to learn to read between the lines. Let people come as they are. God, I bless your name. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time on tonight. We thank you for your loving kindness, God. The peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you that you are the God that sees all, knows all. You are the God. That sits high, God, and the one that looks low. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are 
the God that knows our heart. You know our brokenness. You know our good days. You know our bad days. You know our sad days, God. You know the things that we have never told anyone. Those things that we're still acting out in our behavior. Because we don't want to say that we were raped as a child. So many men are acting out of lust because they were molested as a child, but they don't want to tell anybody. We bind that spirit of shame on today. You have no right, no authority to the men of God. You have no right, you have no authority to the women of God. Loose your hold on today. Oh, God, I bless your name. God, I bless your name. Be free, man of God. It's not your fault. You don't have to worry. You don't have to work condemnation. Be free, woman of God. It was not your fault. My God. Oh, God, I bless your name. Lord, we thank you that you're touching the hearts, the minds of your people. Give clarity. Speak to us tonight in dreams. Give us visions, God. Give us clear understanding. Your words as a good man's steps are ordered by you. We come for our order tonight. We come for our instruction on tonight, God. This is not church as usual. We're not here to have a fashion show. Not to worry about our neighbor. This thing is personal. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. That's our heart's cry tonight. That's our heart's desire tonight. We come tonight calling you Abba Father. You are the good father. Lord, we ask that you touch us in a special way. Touch every marriage tonight, God. Allow yourself to be revealed as the great restorer. You are the one who restores. You are the one who heals. You are the mender of broken hearts, God. You are a mind-regulating God. Oh, Jesus. Touch the hearts of the children that have been affected by, by divorce, whose hearts are still wounded, whose hearts cry every time mom and daddy argue. Help us to see the enemy as the enemy and not each other because the Bible says this battle is not against flesh and blood. The principalities of evil and wickedness in high places. Oh God, I bless you. And we bind every strong man that is standing against our marriages on tonight. We bind rebellion. We bind witchcraft in the name of Jesus. We bind fear in the name of Jesus. We bind shame and condemnation in the name of Jesus. We bind rejection and abandonment. You have no hold on the people of God. Oh, Jesus. God, I bless your name. May the love of God be loose tonight. The joy of the Lord be loose tonight the peace of God the peace of God the peace of God may it be a portion tonight the peace of God that surpasses all understanding let the children rest tonight God teach us to pray with our children to comfort their souls God teach us to, to lead them to you God because we won't be here always. We're not God. We're only mama. We're only daddy. God, I bless you. And we thank you that you're doing a work, God. We will not fail to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that you are worthy of. Though we're in evil times, though things are happening and Corona is even in the land, God, we really believe that you are our protector. You are our shield and our buckler, God. You are our healer, God. You are all in all. You are the bridge over troubled water. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. We put our trust in you, God. We believe your report. And wherever we're lacking faith, we believe, but help our unbelief. God, we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Ooh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. God, I bless your name. 
You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You're holy in all of your ways. You are righteous in all of your ways. You're unfailing in all of your ways. You're loving in all of your ways. You are holy in all of your ways to us. You're the good, good father. And we're loved by you. Hallelujah. Remember that you're loved by God. And that he is perfect in all of his ways. Even your problems are a part of his perfection. Even your pain is a part of his perfection. Ooh, my God. Thank you, Lord. I believe somebody's house is settled by the peace of God tonight. I'm not going to keep you too much longer because I want you to go and have marriage ministry for those that are married. I want you to go and lay hands <laughs> on each other. Hallelujah. Um, someone asked, what is my cash app? It is on my TikTok page. Also, my YouTube channel is on my TikTok page also. But my cash app is dollar sign number four, all dolled up. A-L-L-D-O-L-L-E-D-U-P. Woo, I love God. I'll join y'all back here in the morning. We've been doing our morning makeovers. I don't really have a set time, but... Um, and then join me tomorrow night at 7 p.m. right back here for our marriage conference, Naked and Ashamed. I love you all. Blessings and peace, people of God. I'm Apostle Julia, and I am over and out.